Are e-bikes more expensive than non-e-bikes? Well, it's a big question, it's a puzzling question, it's a frequently asked question, and indeed, it's a difficult to answer question. In this video, we'll be tearing up the myths and looking at the facts between e-bike versus non-e-bike prices. So the general perception is then that e-bikes are in fact more expensive than non-e-bikes, and why not? I mean, common sense would tell you that all things being equal, when you compare, say, a non-e-bike to an e-bike of the same specification, then yes, the e-bike's gonna be more expensive because it's got a motor, a battery, and a display on it. However, what we do know is that on a normal bike, pouring more money into the bike doesn't actually give an equal return on performance, especially when you get about from the £3,000 mark, it, comes about, it becomes about diminishing returns. You can go from £3,000 to £6,000, and you're talking really fine detail to get that performance increase. However, on an e-bike, um, the same rules do not apply. You, know, kind of, you don't need the kind of lightweight carbon because the kind of, there's the an inherent weight of an e-bike. So yeah, this is a very delicate subject which we're discussing here. Yeah, it's a sensitive subject. And indeed, on a non-e-bike, you're actually paying for that sensitivity that gives you the performance from such things as suspension. I think maybe on the focus on, on an e-bike is more should be more about durability and reliability, and maybe that you should be spending your money more on such things as maybe a spare battery on kind of more tires because you can be riding more often. So maybe there should be a value placed on trail time. Maybe a £4,000 e-bike is going to give you more grins than a, say, an £8,000 non-e-bike. Indeed, maybe we should be looking at this differently. The fact that actually what makes a great e-bike is quite different to what makes a great non-e-bike. So what exactly does expensive prove? Is expensive better? Well, that's a really complex subject. I'm gonna go into the kind of detail of pricing of bikes here. Um, now, it does seem that in recent history that the e-bikes, certainly in the kind of mid-travels, kind of 150, 160 category, seem to be the more expensive bikes, the flagship bikes, if you will. Now, let's take Cube as an example in the mid-travel category, 160 mil travel. Now, the Stereo Hybrid 160 Action Team in e-bike version retails around about £2,000 more expensive than the equivalent flagship in the non-e-bike, the Stereo 160 C 6.2. So there's a big difference. However, if you look at the 140 mil travel flagship bike from Cube compared to the 160 mil flagship, you'll see it's the same price. However, you get a far higher component spec on that 140 mil travel, kind of better forks, better shock absorber, and better seat post. So what does that tell you? Well, it shows the complexity even within a brand, and that kind of pricing is actually kind of done, you know, some brands actually kind of aggressively price some new bikes to get kind of, it's more volumatic to get more sales of that bike. So yeah, pricing is a really complex subject. Right, so let's bring this back around to e-bikes. Where does it stand in terms of e-bikes? Well, 140 mil travel, top of the range cube is 3499. 140 mil travel, top of the range e-bike from cube, for 499 so a thousand pound difference which kind of which is kind of where you're at really kind of you got you know as i said you've got a motor you've got a battery and you've got a display and you've got a killer bike so let's take another example this time from specialized so you walk into a specialized store with three and a half thousand pounds burning a hole in your pocket you go downstairs and you compare like for like e-bike versus non-e-bike. Now, in this case, the Turbo Level FSR comes in at £3,499, whereas the non-e-bike equivalent, um, the Stump Jumper Carbon Comp, um, is the same price, but it's crucially got a better specification on it, better fork, better brakes, and uh, obviously a drop of seat post. Now, if you wanted a similar specification e-bike, it's gonna cost you £750 more. So that's a lot of money. So what would I do? Well, 
at £3,499, this is still a lot of bike. It's got a motor, it's got a battery, and it's got the software and display that go with it. So maybe I'm thinking, well, take this bike and maybe upgrade it with a fork and a dropper post in the future. Alternatively, you could take the hit and go for the extra £750 in the first place. I know it's a lot of money, but look what you're getting. You're gonna get the kind of seat dropper, which is good to have on an e-bike because you'd be doing more climbing and more descending. You're gonna get a bigger stanchion fork, which is gonna take the hits that much better on your e-bike. Plus, of course, the kind of four pot calipers on the, on the brakes, which is gonna anchor you better as well. So you need to weigh up your options, and that's just, you know, that's just with specializing. All different brands have different kind of alternatives. But I think in this instance, the kind of 750 pound makes sense because the upgrades do give you that kind of better performance. Now, I think we've explored and proven that e-bikes in general are about a thousand pound more expensive than a non-e-bike. But what we've touched on as well is kind of where the value lies. Now, in a non-e-bike, um, in general, the kind of componentry across brands, across ranges, is largely quite similar. You know, people measure things such as, you know, they give value to weight and things such as like a SRAM Eagle or a Fox Kashima to kind of give that performance advantage. However, value is measured on e-bikes in different ways, in different places, things like integration, quiet motors, longer range kind of batteries. Um, so yeah, it's important. And you know, we're still talking technology, but actually we're talking different technology. So the bottom line is what constitutes a high value e-bike is actually still evolving. Things such as range, power, integration, aesthetics, and silence. I mean, what actually constitutes value? It's a big, big subject. So there you go, e-bike versus non-e-bike pricing. Very, very complex subject. Uh, if you want to look at the difference between uh, long travel versus short travel e-bike, click up here. And for the difference between a e-bike versus a non-e-bike and a downhill, have a look up here. Hope this, this video has given you some insight into the whole subject of pricing. Uh, if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. Uh, don't forget to leave your comments below. I know there's gonna be loads on this one. And yeah, don't forget to subscribe.